Hi, Julie Osher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. I'm back. As many of you know, I often post my work in process on Facebook. And when I was posting the evolution of this cradle, many of you commented on the teddy bears. You just really loved the teddy bears and asked me to do a separate video of them all to themselves. And that's what I'm going to do. Well, sort of. I'm going to do the teddy bears, but I'm going to throw in a little extra for you. I'm going to show you how to make some of the royal icing pillows, like the one nestled behind him and some of the others that you see on this plate as well. That'll be a little, little added bonus for this particular video. But for the most part, I'm just gonna show you how to decorate this cute little cookie. You could make the cookie in conjunction with a cradle and have a really elaborate baby shower gift, or you can make the teddy bears all by themselves and they're super cute that way too. So what will you need for this project? It's a one cookie project. We're just gonna use a single teddy bear. Now these cute cookie cutters, you may wonder where they came from. They came from Cookie Cutter Kingdom and they sell a whole graduated set of these teddy bears. So in addition to that one cookie, we'll need a number of colors of royal icing, not that many, brown, blue, pink, white, and black, I believe. In addition to that, we will be using some accent pieces, royal icing daisies. We'll also be giving some dimension to the teddy bears through the use of an edible marker. We'll be dusting on some dry charcoal or black petal dust. And then some of these accents, like the little patches and the bibs that look like they're actually fabric or material. We're gonna be making out of a combination of wafer paper and frosting sheets. And then for that added bonus of the pillows, I'm gonna be talking about how to take basic large round royal icing transfers or rectangular ones and combine them with wafer paper to create kind of a dimensional effect, a little pillow that can be tucked in behind, behind the teddy bears. So now we're going to start the piping process. The thing that's important about this particular cookie is that we want a dimensional effect and we want demarcation, clear demarcation between the segments of the teddy bear. As you can see here, he's kind of puffy in the center, yet his arms are also puffy and clearly delineated from the body as his feet are clearly delineated from his body and other parts as well. And in order to get that effect, you want to make sure that you pipe the parts separately allow some drying time between piping the adjacent area. If you pipe everything at once, you'll get one big flat looking cookie. So we're gonna start by piping the extremities, the feet, the arms, the ears, and then move towards the inside. For this, I'm using royal icing. I've tinted it with my chef master Buckeye Brown, which I quite like. Kind of a light brown because I'm gonna be putting some black detailing on top. And I'm using a relatively thick flooding icing. Again, it's kind of gradually flowing off the spoon. And the reason for that is that I want to, again, give more body to the icing. I don't want it to sink as much, and a looser icing will tend to sink a little bit more. So let's start first. I've got little sort of leg pieces here before I get to the foot. And my trussing needle is going to come in handy to knock down any peaks and to smooth out any areas, like so. We want to do that on the other side as well. And I'll pipe as many non-adjacent parts as I can, but I don't want to pipe too many before I quick set it in my dehydrator or my oven because these small areas are prone to cratering. By that I mean the icing sinking and collapsing back in on itself. And we don't want it to do that, leave a little pocket in the center. We want it to look nice and puffy. So if I see that beginning to happen, I'll quickly move it into my dehydrator, set at the lowest temperature, about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, for a couple minutes, just till the outer skin is crusted over. This also allows me to move on to adjacent pieces much more quickly. And again, you could do that in an oven, set at the very lowest temperature. So quick outline, and then I want to flood immediately so that that outline merges with the flood icing. Again, my trussing needle comes in handy to get into these smaller areas. My tip is too big to get into. I'm going to rotate that. Do the same thing over here. And now I think that's ready to go into the dehydrator to set those parts.
So again, as you get down into the corners and other areas that are tight, you can bring in your trussing needle to help make the connections a little more refined rather than using the tip to push the icing over there. Use your trussing needle as you get into these tighter areas. So in this last stage of dehydrating, I've let it dry completely all the way through. Actually, I let it quick set in there and then I let it dry overnight because for the next application of texture and detail, I'll be drawing to some extent on the cookie and I want that icing to be completely dry all the way through so I don't crack through it. Now you'll notice on my finished guy, he's got some depth and dimension along the seams, some dark areas create that sense of depth and to create those I used, I started first by outlining some of the seams with my rainbow dust edible marker. I'm using the fine tipped end. It's got both a fat and a fine tipped end. And I'm going to use the fine end to do these seams, these joints between the bodies and the leg, just to draw a little black line in there. And it's useful to have him on non-skid material for this because if he moves, you can get a black line in completely the wrong spot. So I'll do all the fine lines first. And then I'm going to flip the marker over and use the fat side for some other areas. Basically, I'm just drawing little lines between all the major sections. Now I'm going to flip it over and I want to create some depth in the areas that are going to be his paws and his ears by creating a shadow with the finer, the, with the, rather with the fatter edge of the marker. I'm just kind of drawing it along the side of the icing, trying to get it to lap up a little bit. It's also, of course, coloring the inside a little bit too, but I'm really mostly trying to get it on the edge here. So to make sure that it's getting on the edge, I do need to kind of rotate it. Okay, so it's got some nice shadowing in there. Some of that will get covered, but hopefully some of that will stay revealed when we get those filled in with the other colors. The next element of shading I want to do is some dusting, just to give them kind of a, more of an antique look and to add more dimension in those joints. And for that, I'm using CK Products Charcoal Petal Dust. It's not a luster dust, so it's not shiny. It's just going to add the color black to it. And I'm just going to rub it kind of into these seams. Don't have to be precise about it. And shade sort of the bottom of his stomach some of the lower areas on them as well. And then lastly, up and around the ears, we want to get as well. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I do want to mark out the mouth where the white's going to go. And for that, I am coming back to my fine tipped marker while I have it out. I'm going to just do a light outline first. Now that I've got the general outline, I'll come in and outline it more heavily. I want to see some of this behind the white that we're going to pipe down. Okay, so we're ready to flood those other areas. So with all those shadows created, I'm ready to fill, and I just want to make sure I don't fill to the point that I cover all the shadow, because I want some suggestion of it revealing. So I've got a very small opening on my cone. I'm using a Wedgwood Blue here, which is a CK Products color, which I quite like. And make sure I don't overflow it, but I get a nice uniform shape. I'm not going to push any more out of the bag. I'm going to instead kind of move it around with my trussing needle to fill that cavity nicely. And a little pink, again, the same consistency as the blue. I don't want this quite as high because I want it to look like it's the inside of his ear. You could lay the pink first and then the brown over it to get it really recessed. So that's another design option. Okay, so now we're ready to put down his little muzzle with white. There'll be one last drying sequence and then we'll be ready to lay the final details on them. So I'm using roughly the same consistency white as I used for the brown, pink, and blue. And I'm trying to cover, I just want a little bit of the black outline to reveal. And I managed to cover the extra thick line I had on the right quite nicely. I think that looks perfect. Now I'm going to pipe the nose on his muzzle or mouth. 
And for that, the white icing just needs to have a crust on it. It doesn't need to be completely dry all the way through, though if it is dry all the way through, there's no harm done. I'm just gonna do a little wet on wet technique for the nose, pipe a little black oval and do a little white highlight. So I wanna have both my black and my white icing ready to go at the same time. This is a slightly looser consistency than I used elsewhere because I want it to form a nice rounded bead all on its own. So I'm gonna first pipe the black oval. I think that looks pretty good. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna pipe a little bit of white to the side as a highlight. Very small opening on my tip. I think that looks pretty cute. Okay, so the eyes I want pretty close set. So now that everything's completely dry, and everything's dry all the way through, it should be. I've given this some longer drying time than typical, so the muzzle is also quite dry. I wanna come in and do all my stitching work, and I'm back to the fine tip of my Rainbow Dust Jet Black pen to do that. And I'm just gonna do some quick little lines around each paw and each foot to simulate stitching. So lastly, I wanna give him a little bit of a wrinkle at the brow here, a little sweep there. We wanna give him a couple of eyebrows. And then right there, very sweet. And then the last accents are going to be a little wafer paper patch and one of those daisies that I talked about in the grill video. Looks awfully cute. And then we'll put a little patch down. And to do that, I like to apply wafer paper backed with a frosting sheet. The pink part is the wafer paper. It's very thin and translucent. And the frosting sheet is another, another edible paper, but it's thicker. And so when I back the two, I stick them together with a little bit of corn syrup. You can't see through the wafer paper, but you still have the beauty of the little pattern. And I'm using a pre-printed floral pattern. I'll have the source for all of these things in the video description and just cutting a piece that's relatively square and small because I don't want a huge patch on this guy. Maybe something that big would be cute. And I am going to stick that down with a little bit of corn syrup so that it goes down nice and flat as opposed to the royal icing, which can be a little bit lumpy. Just need a dab of it here. And wherever it happens to fall, and the last detail on that, once it's secure, is to give it a little stitching as well. So I'm back to the black marker. And ta-da, that completes the little teddy bear. So on to those pillows I talked about. These are nothing but royal icing transfers that have been sandwiched back to back. I have a whole number of different varieties here I'll talk through. I'm going to show just one of them because they're basically put together the same way. The one that's uh, most distinct is this one is two plain royal icing transfers. I took one and I piped a little ruffle border with royal icing and then dropped the other one on top while the royal icing was wet. So this is actually a royal icing border and it's unique because all of the other little pillows here have wafer paper borders. So here's one that's actually rectangular. Instead of piping round transfers, I piped rectangles. Wrapped a little wafer paper around it, each one, and then tucked some wafer paper in the end and then glued them together with thick royal icing. This is kind of a little bolster pillow, if you will, to put behind the teddy bear. But what I'm gonna show you is probably one of the easiest of the bunch. is simply two royal icing transfers, the yellow part, they could be any color, with a bit of floral wafer paper stuck on top, and a beautiful wafer paper cutout nestled in between. I just want to comment on those cutouts. They were a gift to me when I was in Argentina earlier this year. Hello to everyone in Argentina. MMT Productos donated a bunch of these to me and they were just perfect when I saw them. I'm like, oh, these will be perfect filler for these pillows. So I'm gonna actually use, they come in a lot of different styles. I'm gonna actually use this little blue one because I think it ties into the baby theme quite nicely. And the first step is actually to get the floral paper on top. And for that, I use a craft paper punch. This is a small one and one eighth inch punch, which I hope will fit this 
this piece rather nicely. And sometimes it's nice to be strategic about where you punch. So I'd like to feed the, the paper into the punch upside down and center it where I want it before I actually punch. Here I can see it's centered on that daisy as opposed to doing it right side up. And to stick it down, I'm just using a little corn syrup. Here I have not backed the wafer paper with frosting sheet, and I've done that on purpose because I want some of the yellow to show through. And I think you'll see the difference here between the patch on the teddy bear that I just did, which is very opaque, and this one where you'll see some of the color behind it once I put it down. I just want to get that centered on there. And the wafer paper always lifts around the edges before it dries completely, so you want to, with clean fingers, kind of work it down and make sure it stays down. And you'd want to do that with both sides of the pillows, and you may have to press it down a few times before it's completely dry and fully stuck. And now we do want to nestle that with another backing pillow. I'm not going to decorate the back side because I think you guys get the idea. Stick one of these pretty little papers in the inside. Now to stick these pieces together, I turn to royal icing glue. It's just going to dry much more quickly than corn syrup and keep these things nice and together. So I just want to center this little piece here and put a little more glue on top. This is just basically a sandwiching effect. And how I made these royal icing transfers, I have a whole other video that talks about that. And I think I'm going to put a little blue border on it instead of the pink border that I've got on this one. And for that, I once again turn to my royal icing of beadwork consistency. I'm doing teeny tiny dots. I do like to put a border on any kind of wafer paper cutouts or frosting sheet cutouts just so they don't look so darn cut out and to make a more integrated kind of design. So that completes a simple little pillow. For these bolster pillows, I took these same beautiful little papers and folded them like so before tucking them into the end. So get creative with your use of wafer papers as small embellishments on cookies that can create really lifelike fabric effects. We use them in a variety of ways here. We punched our own with craft paper punches. We used pre-printed ones with beautiful floral designs. You can also print your own. You can stamp on plain paper and create patterns. You can also get pre-punched beautiful little papers like these MMT Productos ones that I introduced to you earlier. They're just gorgeous. So that completes my simple teddy bear and pillow project as standalone cookies. They make a cute little baby shower set. Of course, you can always elevate your game as I like to do by building things up in three dimensions and toss those pillows and teddy bears into a three-dimensional baby cradle. I've got a complete video that talks about how to put this beauty together, so I encourage you to hop on over to that if you haven't seen it already. Till next video, live sweetly.